So this question, this exam question, is actually from a year 13 paper, but the content is just year 12 content, which is why I wanted to show you this one, just to make you think about where you're going to be ending up at the end of, of year 13. But I won't be teaching any more stuff for this in year 13, so it's just from what we've got here. Same concepts as what we've looked at previously. We've got two curves. We know we're going to try and find the area between them by doing the top curve, take away the bottom curve, integrating it with the limits between here and here. Now, clearly, this value is 0. But this is the value that I'm going to need to find out. And we find out that by solving the simultaneous equations. This curve is y equals kx squared. And this curve is y equals the square root of kx. So to solve these simultaneously, I'm going to say that kx squared is equal to the square root of kx. I'm then going to square both sides. When I square the right-hand side, that's nice and easy. I just get kx. But when I square this side, make sure you square each bit individually. You get k squared x to the power of 4. To solve this kind of equation, I'm going to push everything onto one side. So I get k squared x to the power of 4 minus kx equals 0. And then I'm going to factorize. So I take out a kx, which gives me kx cubed minus 1 equals 0. So this tells me two things. Either kx is equal to 0. In other words, x is equal to 0. Why am I happy that x is equal to 0? Because you can see they cross at 0. So that's a solution that I wanted to see that coming out. And this tells me that the other bit is either kx cubed minus 1 equals 0, which says that kx cubed is equal to 1, or x cubed is equal to 1 over x. So x is the cubed root of 1 over k. Already it looks like we must have done something wrong, because oh, it's such a so unpleasant looking. It's not going to be very fun. But this is where indices actually kind of that becomes your friend in this sort of topic, because this isn't very pleasant to look at. We can write this much more neatly if we use indices. What is um, the cubed root of 1 over k in indices? k to the power of minus 1 over 3. The 1 over 3 is the cube root, and the minus changes it from being k to 1 over k. So this value that we've got here is k to the power of minus 1 over 3. A lot of hard work to even get to that stage that we've got here. Um, by the way, the fact they've said this is five marks is mind-blowing, and it wouldn't be five marks in the exam. This is one of the early, um, the early questions that they created. There's no way this could be five marks. Now what we're going to do, pardon? How many marks is it? I think it probably should be more like eight marks, because there's a lot more demanding stuff that's going on here. <laughs> oh, no, 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 this is harder. This is harder. This is from one of their early prototype papers that they made. So what we're going to try and do, we're going to integrate between 0 and k to the power of minus a third. Just because it looks horrible doesn't mean we can't do it. We know how indices work. And we're going to integrate the top curve, which is this one that we've got here, minus the bottom curve. Well, I just want to quickly think about this top curve. If I've got the square root of kx, seeing as we're going to do everything in indices, what would that be in its indices form? It's a bracket of kx to the half. And what about if I wanted it as without the brackets? k to the power of a half, x to the power of a half. Just because if I'm theming my whole question now on indices, I might want to just do everything with indices, OK? So I'm going to integrate the top curve, which is k to the half, x to the half, minus the bottom curve, which is kx squared. And I'm going to be integrating that with respect to x. Now, your brains won't like seeing just k and x. You, you just need to fight against that. Your brain thinks that k is a variable. It's not. It's just a number. So you have to keep telling yourself, what would it be if just k was a number? OK? Now, I'm going to do the integration part. k is just a number, so I'm just going to leave it there, because that's what we do with numbers. We just leave it when we do integration. And I've got x to the power of a half. What does x to the power of a half integrate to? So it will be x to the power of 3 over 2, 2 over 3. And then k is just a number, so I'm going to leave it there. x squared integrates to a third x cubed. And my limits are still 0 and k to the power of minus a third. What a horrible question. 
Now this is a, a stage where this looks super messy, but we've just got to do some substitution. And hopefully the substitution is going to be, end up being really, really nice. So we've got, where do I substitute the k? Do I substitute it in here or where x? I put it where x is. Remember, it's a number. You put the numbers where x goes. So opening up the bracket, I have k to the power of a half multiplied by 2 thirds. Then my x is k to the power of minus a third all to the power of 3 over 2. But again, it's just indices. We can deal with these indices. Then my next bit is minus k times a third times k to the power of minus a third cubed. That was the bit where I substituted k as minus a third cubed that I've got here. Do I need to substitute in 0? No, because no, when I substitute in 0 in place of x, both of these things will be zero because you're multiplying by zero. So all I need to do, all I need to do, I say that like it's just an easy thing, is I just need to tidy up some of these things that I've got. Well, this looks pretty tidy. I've got k to the half and 2 over 3. What is k to the power of minus a third times to the power of 3 over 2? What do you do with the powers there? You multiply them, don't you? So if I just quickly over here, you've got minus a third times 3 over 2, what does that multiply out to? Minus. Minus. Lots of people are doing this. What you should try and get in the habit of is thinking, oh, there's a 3 there and a 3 there, so they cancel. So it's just minus a half. So this power, we've got k to the half times 2 thirds times k to the minus a half. Cube. Then I've got minus k times a third. Here we've got minus a third times three. <coughs> That's k to the minus one. Now you might like to see this just written in a different order because that might help our brains see this. We've got two thirds times k to the half <coughs> times k to the minus a half minus one third times k times k to the minus one. What is k to the half times k to the minus a half? k to the zero. What is k to the 0? 1. So this whole thing here is just 2 thirds multiplied by 1, which is 2 thirds. What is k times k to the power of minus 1? k to the power of 0, which is just 1. So this is just minus 1 third. And 2 thirds minus 1 third is 1 third. The question said, show that for all values of k, the area of r is a third. We got that the area was a third. And why is it for all values of k that it will be a third? Because k's, the, k's out. the k's completely cancel out. Your answer has got nothing to do with k. So the area is always one third that we've got there. You wouldn't actually even need to write anything for that. If you just say that the area is a third, it's just you've, you've shown that it's a third. You're right. If you wanted to be extra clear about it, you could say, so k is always equal to a third. Um, I will come back to this slide in just a second. I just wanted to show you um, what this looks like as a graph, OK? So let me just go to a smaller value of k. Um, this is um, one of the graphs, the red and the, the green bit that we've got here. And you can see they're crossing here and here. And I've put them in terms of k. If I change the value of k, can you see how that little, let's put this in a bit easier to see. The area that I'm talking about is that kind of uh, sort of I don't know, petal shape that you've got there. When I change the value of k, although it's a bit difficult to see, the area isn't really changing. The area is actually just m morphing shape. It's not getting bigger or smaller. It's just kind of morphing into like a different shape that we've got there. So it's just kind of interesting to see what does that mean in practice if it's got nothing to do with k. All of these values have cancelled out, and that area remains constant that we've got there. Okay. So I think 